Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute triangular treat box. I want to give a shout out to fellow UK demonstrator Karen McDonald at Cory Paper Crafts. This is her project idea, but I loved it so much. I just had to recreate it using current products and share this with you. Now I shared this project along with a coordinating card on my live broadcast this week and my live viewers voted on which way they liked the sentiment, straight or angled. Angled seemed to win, so we're gonna make this version today. But this tree box is so cute and easy to make. It just slides off, there's this paper belly band and inside I've stacked two Hershey's Nuggets to show you what those look like. So two Hershey's Nuggets fit in here. The finished dimensions of the box are one and three quarters by one and a quarter by two inches, but note that it does taper. So you have to be pretty strategic in how you place things in here. With the Hershey's Nuggets, I just placed them stacked right on top of each other. A bit of a snug fit, but look how cute that little triangular box is. And then it just slides into this paper belly band. Now this belly band's a little bit tight. I'm gonna to try to do a little bit looser on this version, but I love how that holds it together. We are using the In Bloom Bundle paired with the Paper Blooms Designer Series Paper. This is a free celebration product with purchases of $50 or more that ends on February 28th of 2021, but just a beautiful pack of Designer Series Paper. I love the colors in this. I love this little pattern. That's what we'll be using for today's treat box. And the In Bloom Bundle, I love this bundle. This is one of my favorites in the current mini catalog. Love all of the sentiments, you mean so much to me. Congrats, you're so fancy now. That might be my favorite sentiment. And then the set of dies that go with it. These are the Pierced Blooms dies, and I don't know if you can tell, but each of these dies have stitching to them. So they are really, really great. And this bow, which is probably one of my favorite dies in the whole set, creates these beautiful paper bows here. They almost look like a twine bow, but made out of paper, perfect for those who are bow challenged. So let me show you how easy this is to make. We are starting with a three and a quarter inch by six and a half inch piece of Seaside Spray cardstock. You can get three of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. And along the six and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at one and three quarters, three, four and three quarters, and six. While we're here, I'm gonna make two tick marks, just taking the ball tip of my stylus and pressing that down at two and three eighths, just to make a mark, two and three eighths, and five and three eighths. Then I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and score at one and a quarter. Hold on to your stylus from the Simply Scored, or you can use the stylus tip on your Take Your Pick tool. Let me bring in the template here. We're gonna do some diagonal score lines. Where we added those tick marks, those are our starting points to do some diagonal scores. So I'm just gonna line up my ball tip at the top where we made that little tick mark and score on the diagonal down to the vertical and horizontal intersection of score lines. Okay, so we're gonna do sort of that sandwich board diagonal score lines. So let me go ahead and do that on this piece. So our diagonal score lines look like that. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the straight score lines. And with that one and a quarter inch section along the bottom, I'm gonna come in and cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the horizontal score line. And these two smaller sections are just a little bit too long. So I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and fold the two larger sections out of the way. And then I'm gonna line up this left edge at two and seven eighths. Essentially what we're wanting to do is cut off about three eighths of an inch from these two tabs. Now we are actually gonna remove this lower corner, which I normally would have done first, but we did that backwards. So removing that lower corner, I'm also gonna come in and notch here slightly so we don't get any of the paper corners in the way. And then finally, I'm gonna fold those big sections out of the way, it makes it easier for me to get back at these tabs and come in and miter cut or notch those. Now our piece looks just like that. Now what we can do since we've cut these tabs is I can now fold backwards on those diagonal score lines and burnish them to give them a nice sharp edge. It's difficult to do this before you have cut those bottom tabs, okay? Now we can put this together. I'm gonna flip it over. 
I'm folding on the second score line from the left and using multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm going to apply glue to this little half inch tab. And because we've done these diagonal score lines and already burnished them, I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right, but I want to make sure that that paper is totally flat. We're lining up these horizontal score lines and this horizontal edge to make sure that those are all lined up right. Now here's where our seam is. So this is the back of our treat box. I'm going to fold in the two side tabs. Now we trimmed off that excess so that those don't overlap. I'm going to put liquid glue on the tabs and then liquid glue on the front flap here. Then we'll come in and fold the back flap, then the front flap, and then because of the liquid glue I can slide this right into place and square up the bottom. Put the lid on my glue and I'll use that to press from the inside. And that part of the box is ready to go and it's going to pinch right on those diagonal score lines. Look at how cute that is. Bringing in a strip of the Paper Blooms Designer Series paper that measures one and three quarters by six inches. We're gonna start to hand wrap this around our treat box. So I'm gonna start on the back and one edge, I'm gonna come about halfway into the bottom. Okay, so I'm just holding it there and then I'm gonna fold right around that bottom edge. Okay, so now that that's folded, I'm gonna kind of rest the box on that to keep it in place and then fold over the other two edges, the top first. Again, I'm not going super tight here. And then the bottom, like so. Just kind of pinching on those edges, but it is nice to just leave that as is, should slide on and off really easily. So here's what I'm gonna do with some tear and tape. We've got the one longer edge, the one longer section here. I'm gonna put a strip of tear and tape just right along that edge. So the back side of the paper. And then the short one, I'm gonna put that right along the edge of the front side. So basically when we glue that together around the box, you're gonna have that edge laying down flat and this edge laying down flat. Hopefully that makes sense. I can go ahead and pull the backing off of both of those now. So starting with the back of our box and the shorter edge, Kind of going to do this upside down. So that first and then this one. Like so. Then we can slide the inside box out. You may have to break in the paper just a little bit to make it easier to slide in and out. Now let's put our chocolate in. I'm going to grab one Hershey's nugget and let me just show you really quickly. We're stacking them just like this because these do have a bit of a tapered edge on them. I tried every which way to put get two to fit in there and this was the best way. You'll feel that it's just a snug fit there. So we got our two chocolates in there. Then we're gonna put the belly band around it that's gonna hold everything together. How cute is that? I love it. Let's go ahead and do some quick decorations. I've got a piece of seaside spray that measures one inch by one and three quarter inches. And I'm using the sentiment, you mean so much to me from the In Bloom stamp set. We're gonna ink that up in Night of Navy. And then I'm gonna stamp that on an angle off to the right. Like so. I'm grabbing the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And from the pierced blooms dies, I'm gonna cut one of the flower centers in Night of Navy and then this flower in basic white from this awesome set of dies. So there's what we end up with. I'm just gonna use one of those flower centers and add that with some multi-purpose liquid glue. You could use a glue dot as well. I'm gonna add a little rhinestone to the center. All right, so I'm gonna put liquid glue on the back of the sentiment. We're gonna adhere that to the front of our treat box, about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. I'm grabbing a dimension, I'll put on the back of our flower, and then we'll add that flower off to the side here. And there is the adorable In Bloom Triangular Treat Box. I love this, such a quick little pick-me-up for someone. 
And again, we've got two different versions. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you like the straight sentiment or the angled sentiment. The angled sentiment is actually growing on me. So really, really cute. And I just love how easy this is to make. So thanks again to Karen McDonald at Cory Paper Crafts for the idea. These are so cute and I can't wait to make many more of them. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join, and I'd love to welcome you to the Stampin' Up! family and my team of paper pixies. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.